guess we're alive. Um, so I'm going to call to order this meeting of the Board of Selectmen, September 9th, uh, 2015. Uh, and this is a kind of a special meeting, just one item on the agenda, and that's to uh, just continue discussing um, the um, liquor license for 556 Adams Street, uh, with hopefully the intention of, uh, of voting one way or the other on, on that license tonight, as it does have to. Um, we have a 30 day, what is it, 30 days from the time that the application is filed. filed to issue, which would expire before our next meeting. So, that being said, I, I, th I think the first order of business would be just to, to discuss conditions. Do, do we, what about citizen speak? Do you want to start with that? Um, we don't have an agenda, but yeah, sure, if there is any citizen speak, they're certainly welcome to come up and. We did have, there was one online that said citizen speak. That's the only reason I bring okay. it up in case any of these people okay. were here for that. All right, I didn't see the online, but so if anybody would like to address the board, they're more than welcome to. Okay. No. Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on. <laughs> um, so how do we want to handle? It? Do we want to? Do you want to vote first, then discuss conditions, or do we want to discuss conditions and vote? I'd, I'd say conditions first. Uh, we'll just talk a little bit about it and then get into uh, a vote. Opinion. Okay. Did okay. You, when you say vote, did you mean on whether to grant the license? Grant the license. To the conditions? Yes. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you want to have Mary and Vance come up to if you have questions, or if you'd like to? No. Sure. Come on up. <clears throat> okay. The, lo the last time we met on this, um, there were. There were a number of conditions already uh, uh, proposed by the the, uh, the licensee. Um, I think they were to the liquor license, specific to the liquor license. Um, there were what eleven conditions, I guess. Um, there were two of them that I had an issue with, and I think I suggested the change. One was um, on the condition restaurant, not a bar, and um, and it was it was not a problem with the which stated that alcohol revenue from sale of liquor would not be more than 25% of total revenue and that the proof of that would be a, a reviewed financial statement, uh, which I would prefer to see a um, what's called an attestation engagement. Um, so the wording would say um, restaurant uh, revenue shall not, <coughs> from sale of alcohol, shall not exceed 25% of total revenue. Uh, at the time of annual renewal of the license, the owner must provide a report from a duly licensed certified public accountant provided at a minimum <laughs> limited assurance as defined in section AT 101 of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants attestation standards of the owner's assertion, assertion that liquor sales of the previous year did not exceed 25 percent of total revenue. So that was my first one. It seemed okay yeah. to me if it's feasible for the applicant to do. Yeah, basically all it really is, is is the owner asserts to the CPA that my my revenue from liquor was less than 25% or less, and the CPA does some testing. Um, and this does not raise to the level of an audit because uh, limited assurance means something less than an audit. Um, so it would be a review, so a little less costly, that he would provide some procedures to give the selectmen at least limited assurance that um, liquor sales were not more than 25 percent. So I, I think it's a, a little bit better service than just a plain review. Can I ask this rather dumb question? Sure. <laughs> um, if it, it's supposed to do prior year sales, but I don't know what kind of um, accounting restaurants do. I don't know what fiscal year they use. So, you know, the liquor license comes up at the end of November. That's not any fiscal year that I know of. So right. do you want to say I what fiscal year? I would say the previous year? fiscal year. Yeah, the previous fiscal, fiscal year, year for the restaurant. That would be whatever. the easiest thing, yeah, because okay. then it can dovetail with whatever. Thank you. Everybody agree with that? I agree. That's fine. Okay. Okay, and then the only other change that I had was um, the um, seating at the bar and uh, it requiring... Um, um, no more than two drinks without uh, service of food, and uh, we've changed the um, word food to meal. Um, 
and meal to be defined, you know, and, and meal certainly can be an appetizer or something like that, but something more than a bag of nuts. Um, so that's why we changed the meal. And um, I would also like to see that um, uh, provision also go to the um, any um, service at restaurant table as well. That you know they wouldn't have more than two drinks if somebody wanted to sit at the table and kind of prolong the visit there and not order food for a while um, could potentially unlikely to happen, but could potentially have more than two drinks. Any issues? Uh -huh. Okay. I just had a question, um, and I, you know, probably answer very quickly. But related to parking uh, and also deliveries, just I want assurance that we won't have um, large trucks such as 18 wheelers going through the neighborhood. That we monitor that. I know it does happen on occasion. Um, we do receive phone calls when that does occur, and I know that you do your best to do that. But um, just to look out for the neighbors, um, and uh, you know, maybe you know, having a conversation with. Um, the food delivery trucks that you deal business with uh, regularly, that, that they know that, that uh, Adam Street, you know, as it does say in the, in the language, that that is going to be where the deliveries are going to occur. And then on parking, um, that the 21 space lot, um, is there an opportunity to, at the end of the night, close that parking lot and then reopen it just before the restaurant opens during lunch? Yeah, we could probably chain it. Is it Possibility, because yeah, I, I think that, that yeah, I, I think that would be something beneficial to the neighborhood. Something that we've heard um, that might, might be a good start. Yeah, I suppose that sure. way you wouldn't get people parking at least before and after hours. Right. We could make that commitment. We can, I'm not sure exactly how it would work. Out. Yeah, and I know I know Billy does a great job um, for Bob Falcone in, in his lot. So I'm I'm pretty sure that you'll be right on top of it anyhow. Yeah. Good he's, he's really good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and as far as the delivery, we, we are in fact getting a delivery space, a marked delivery space on Adams Street. Um, uh, that is to come. Is, well, there is a meeting of the um, traffic, traffic commission, commission because the traffic commission has to decide whether they, to recommend to the selectmen. So okay. it will be up to you actually. Yep. But I'm, I'm told by Chief Wells that that's on their next agenda both the delivery space on Adams Street for large trucks. Yes. And the point of that is that that's where large trucks are supposed to park, and they're not supposed to go onto the, the short side streets. Not just for this restaurant, but for For everybody. Square. Right. And then I for think that's long um, overdue. valet parking as well, which re re required valet parking space to be designated, probably perhaps a double space. And the two restaurants are going to coordinate the valet parking. But they're also going to be considering that. So you will see if they recommend both of those spaces, you will see it coming back to your meeting, and then it will be your decision whether or not to to approve it. So it helps to know that you're in favor of it. Um, and that was what the planning board and came up with really um, after a lot of discussion at the hearings last winter about what could be done to try to direct truck traffic. Small trucks can go into the small lot on the side. Little little you know local produce trucks. But these big, whatever they are, 12 wheel I don't know what you I describe them, 18 wheelers, they're very, um, they block the street, and nobody wants to see them on the side street. So that was the solution. Um, that permit as well, of course, can be revisited if there's still a problem, but it says in the permit that, w that the restaurant is not, is going to regulate its deliveries to reasonable hours that won't be obtrusive to neighbors and that large trucks will deliver on Adam Street and that small trucks will go into the Park Street lot and uh, Church Street lot. So they won't be parking on the street. That was a concern that was expressed at the hearings. Katie, do you have anything else, David? Uh, no, not this time. So I sent around some comments. They were mostly minor comments to Marion earlier today, but the, the main one that I wanted to just bring up was just about the hours and the closing times in advance. The idea was just that the draft currently says 11 a.m. to midnight Saturday, Sunday through Saturday. And we just want to be sure that we're, I wanted to raise the point about whether we're tr treating it the same way as Abbey Park, which has, which now you've said that you sometimes you even close earlier than what you're permitted to, but that the, the license itself for Abbey Park has different hours, only by an hour. So we're not talking a big difference, but weekday, weekdays versus weekends 
have a different closing time. Then again, Steel and Rye, and I don't know about 88 Wharf because I don't have a copy of that one, but the Steel and Rye one permits the hours to, to end at midnight. So, um, so this one is based on midnight. Marion and I talked this afternoon, and one of the, one of the factors um, is that there is going to be valet parking. So it, one of the concerns with closing at midnight on a weeknight would just be that you could potentially have people congregate in the parking lot, which could be disruptive to some of the neighbors who are trying to sleep. But because we're going to have valet parking, pro the likelihood of that seems to be pretty minimal. And if, if it does become a problem, it's something that we could revisit at a, at a later date, whether it's at the renewal time or if there's significant a significant place. problem that we're, that we're hearing about, we could revisit that. So the question is, do we want to go with the proposed hours as a board or do we want to make a change? Yeah. And I, you know, I'm not, I don't really feel strongly either way. We are only talking about a small amount of time, but. Judging from what I've seen of, um, you know, both the operation of steel and rye, um, certainly, you know, Monday through, through Thursday, um, weekends might be a little bit different. Abbey Park, I know, is the same. That pretty much by 10 o'clock, there is nobody left in the restaurant. It's, it's, it's pretty quiet. I mean, there's, there's a half dozen, dozen people in there at most. So I, I wouldn't be totally uncomfortable with that. Again, we always have, if, if, if a problem does arise, we can always we can revisit. revisit. Vance, could you just speak to what's the practice at Abbey Park weekends and weeknights in terms of the closing time? Well, um, like I, uh, Sunday nights, we um, we actually close the kitchen earlier, which causes the restaurant to close earlier. So we do close earlier, and we probably would. It just makes better business sense on nights like that to close earlier. So I think it's kind of a natural thing. I think it varies a little bit according to times of year. You know, maybe around the maybe around the holidays, or um, certainly not in the summer, where it's uh, around here anyway. Is is it a is it a is it a big deal? There's just a, maybe some small pockets of time where we would um, have to disrupt the party if we had to, if we were restricted there. It's just occasionally. And I guess the other mitigating fact here is that in the proposed permit we have um, a sentence that says the last dinner orders will be taken by 10 p.m., which is not in the Abbey Park license. I don't think it's in the Steel and Rye license either. So. That at least um, is Steel another protection for the, the neighborhood. Does Steel and Rye have any stipulations with respect to it? And I, I know they do have some, I just don't know what they are with respect to its uh, patio dining. Steel yes. and Rye does have hour restrictions, and so does um, is this Wharf the same? Street. Patio. But uh, both no, no, Steel and Rye and Wharf Street are different because Wharf Street has a condominium complex above okay. it. And I was on the Board of Selectmen when we did that license, and we were concerned, and that we, we agreed with the residents that there would be restrictions on patio hours, which is a great part of that restaurant, yep. because people live above it. Um, Steel and Rye faces neighbors and is on a main street, so the patio is totally visible. Um, so it's not that big, but you know, the restriction exists. It's 10 o'clock. Yes, so this patio, the, their last seating is 10 p.m. This patio is. It was devised really because of the nature of the real estate. There's a sliver of land that yep. goes between two commercial buildings. Both of them are two-story buildings, and you know the restaurant's two stories on one side. The other one um, is where the you know coffee shop and everything is. That's two stories, and it's the it's this narrow strip, and in the back, what's it, it, the little narrow end is the back end of the parking lot for the commercial building on the left, mm -hmm. and the front. Is a, it's less than six feet wide. You can right, see, see the it, street. Yeah. It's just there will be right. no access because it's not permitted by this license, and uh, ABCC prohibits public access to a patio except right. through the restaurant. But the point is that this is really different. And what the designer told us when he was working on the design was that sound, if there were any, was would bounce off these walls back into the restaurant because those are the two high walls mm -hmm. on the sides. And that's what we expect to happen. If there were a problem with noise, again, this is an issue that the selectmen could come back to, and they could restrict the hours more. Um, be, but in, it, this restaurant patio is different from the other two restaurants, and that's why we didn't propose a okay. restriction. And I think in number five, it's also reasonable because we have in number five, no music or excessive noise is permitted on the patio. So 
who are already having a prohibition. There's no live entertainment permitted in the, in the restaurant at all under this draft of the permit conditions, and there'd be no music permitted on the patio. So I think that does give a little bit of extra protection here. I, I had that same question, Tom, about and the patio. And lighting will be low level? And not I don't spilling. know what kind of lighting well, it's would be. ambient lighting anyway, so it's, um, yeah. it's, it would be low level. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the no possibility that's spilling out into the... It's very secluded. There's also a pretty high fence around it. Okay. So it's um, it's it's a courtyard more than a patio. Yeah. Okay. okay. So for the board, the question of the hour is: Do we want to stick with 11 to 12, which was proposed and is consistent with Steele and Ryan? I would. I'd be willing to do that, subject to revisiting this if it does become a problem. I would tend to agree. Yeah, yeah I agree. You know, I think you've done a good job at Abbey Park. Um, you know, basically you're closing when you're not busy. You know, and, and obviously we want to support business, but at the same time we want to be respectful to our neighbors. So, you know, I would I would go along with that as well, um, subject to revision should it be an issue, which I don't foresee. Yeah, I agree. I don't foresee it either. The the only other thing I, w I want to bring up too is is the valet parking, and I, I know it hasn't been ironed out yet, but just to make sure that and at Steel and Rye, I don't know whether it actually occurs, but but neighbors complain about it, and that's valet parking on residential streets so to make sure that if, if we do grant the license that we figure out some way that the valets are going to park either in, in the commercial district or on some private property that they've already um, or I even thought you know one possibility we've got a number of service zone spaces that really aren't used at night that maybe you can make them service zone slash valet spaces or something at least to keep the cars out of the well, that's an interesting idea. No one talked about that last right, year. It's a possibility. But what, what did happen last year was we didn't know yet whether Abbey Park and this restaurant would have any common, any connection, although it was being discussed. So we couldn't promise that, but we could say that if that happened, then they can coordinate all of the parking that's available to the two restaurants yes. and select the, the for valet parking use, particularly those parking lots that are less likely to be a problem for neighbors. There's there's a citizens parking lot, citizens bank parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, there's the existing Falcone parking lot, and there's even an additional lot that might be used for overflow, more likely for employees. That's owned by Falcones. That's further up Granite Ave. That was discussed at the hearing. There's no formal agreement as to that, but it would be a possibility at night because okay. the businesses there may not use it. Um, but that's a that is an interesting idea. We could talk to the traffic commission about it to see whether they might consider nighttime flexibility on those service zone spaces because there's no reason why valet parking couldn't be over there and that's that's at a distance excuse me for most of the residences so it's a, it's a good idea but the other point i wanted to make was in the permit from the planning board it says that valet parking and, and also from the board of appeals they both use this language valet parking is is to be used providing it improves the traffic and parking situation right so if it doesn't and it creates a problem, there's a way for to, to withdraw from that option if there's a better way to do it. Um, my, I, what I suspect is that it will be very helpful when the restaurant is busy if it's well managed. And Vance had a um, company come in with a, a plan that we showed that, that involved both restaurants and involved all the parking lots and showed them how it could work mm -hmm. if that became a possibility. So hopefully that's what you'll be starting with and trying to decide how to organize it. Okay, great. I, there were a couple of others. So j just on the number four in the hours, did we fix the typo at 10 a.m. to 10 p.m.? Did that get fixed? It wasn't in the one, the last version of it that I saw. I have a final copy. I did, but I didn't know whether it was accurate because Mine we says had 11 discussion. to 12. <coughs> yeah. I think there it's was one place where it said a.m. and it should have been p.m. Yeah, the la it said last call for liquor service in the patio will be 10 a.m. should be p.m. We just want to get that right. <laughs> okay, that's not right. I don't, I don't usually crack my first beer that early. So. <laughs> okay, and then um, yeah, those are pretty, I think the only other ones were the smoking section. So the revision so. currently mm -hmm. says, Mary, correct me if this is not the final one, but it says no smoking is permitted in the restaurant or on Adams Street in front of the restaurant. There is a designated smoking area available in front of 550 Adams Street, which is Abbey Park. So, um, is that Tom? I, you were the one who raised this. Yeah, point. I, I would have concern if we if we have if if there's no smoking at all, that people are just going to spill out into the square someplace. And 
you know, if there's a business open, they're going to wind up in front of Theodore. So there's I would a real prefer dilemma. that you... There's a real dilemma with this because I talked to the Board of Health about it. And you are not allowed to have a designated smoking area at your entrance because you're not allowed to let smoke enter the restaurant. Right. And this restaurant has a front entrance that's one storefront wide. So you can't have it right there. We don't want to have it in Church Street because of the problem we've already talked about. And I think everybody agrees we do not want to encourage people to congregate. It's not so much for the smoke, but for the congregation. They, people might gather out there and talk. So the options are a designated smoking area that isn't right in front of the doorway, and this restaurant is just renting the doorway and the space in back of it. it um, it's possible that we could ask for permission from Falcone Properties to see if we could put a designated smoking area for the restaurant in front of their other storefronts. My suggestion was to to locate, to have a designated smoking area, but have it be, well, one possibility is have it be the one in front of Abbey Park. I was thinking that, yeah. And is that too know, far along a walk? Well, it's, a, people it's do one it? block. It, it's, it's somewhat unusual, but the restaurant really didn't want to have any smoking area because they don't want, really want smoking. I don't think they're that worried about discouraging some people who smoke, although I may rue those words. I don't know how you feel, Vance, but the idea was that they didn't want the smoke in the restaurant and they didn't want people congregating in the back. So that was the only other option. So if that's an acceptable compromise for the Board of Selectmen, we could try it. I think we should make it as difficult as possible to smoke. <laughs> okay. So if we had it combined, it's one designated smoking area for the two restaurants. Yeah. Can I ask a question, Vance? Sure. Is, um, what is the experience at Abbey Park? Are there many smokers who really do stand outside and, and smoke at the restaurant? It's a, it's, it's, I wouldn't smoking say many. is decreasing so much. I wouldn't so say much many. It's, it's, um, we, I mean, we, Has it been a problem? Uh, no. You haven't had complaints no. from anyone? Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing was the sign bylaw. I had suggested we put including but not limited to the sign by bylaw, which we'd cite as amended. But um, I think Marion is probably right that we're, we're looking at revising that anyway, and probably the broad re reference to the town of Milton bylaws covers that. So, so we just back again, we'll really this, but we had a comment from, from the crowd that, that the smoking has been on Franklin, not on Adams. Yes, isn't it the corner of Franklin and Adams? Franklin and Adams. Yeah, but that's still a commercial district right there. It's at the side of the building? Yeah, it, it can't be at the door. No, it's got to be along the side. The Just for clarification. I, I would say on the smoking, I, I sort of started a dialogue with the Board of Health but didn't finish it and I wanted to know what they thought and I know they have at times considered even the idea of no smoking in public areas but they certainly haven't done it. Um, so they could have more feedback and if they have a better suggestion, this is a minor, minor but perhaps important part of the permit but again you could come back and amend your, your um, the town's liquor license permit mm -hmm. to change those provisions. So I, that's the only suggestion I can make because at this point I didn't get enough feedback to really have anything concrete from them. Okay. Is everybody comfortable with having a, a combined smoking area for now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully it discourages it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Anything else? No, the others I think Marion incorporated, the others that I sent her, so you would have received, this went out to everyone, Marion, the latest draft. So the draft from earlier today, I know you have an updated one. It's so confusing, but, um, well, I, I did one myself, but not, you know, only because I wanted to have notes for this meeting. But I think what came, went out earlier, Katie's comments were marked on a draft that I had sent out, and that was... Yeah, one is just add after the word, you know, management, supervision, corporation, or limited liability company, right. which mm -hmm. this is. And yeah. The other one is just, um, initially the draft said, the sale or service of alcoholic beverages is prohibited in any area not licensed by the board of selectmen, and no change in such area shall be made without the approval of the board and the chief of police, which was not, it was only the board in the other licenses. So I thought we should keep that consistent, consistent. And, um, and say and add, unless shown on an amended plan. So it's without a written approval or without approval by the board of selectmen and unless shown on an amended plan. So they would have to file the amended plan sure. that would be presented. That makes sense. There is a new provision. You will all notice that I added in my draft this number four under the liquor license for the secured and visible patio area. That responds to the new um, guidelines published at the end of July by ABCC. 
So I would suggest that that's something that ought to be in future liquor licenses if there's a patio. And it's, I hope it's, you should look at that language because that's new from what you got last week. Yeah, that's yes. what we are now. Page three, okay. number four. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I was going to come fine with the with the conditions as we've discussed. Yes. Um, a lot of the others are very similar to what's in the other licenses. Right. So I'll entertain a motion if somebody wants to make it. I'll move that we approve the issuance of a common Vittler's license and a liquor license for 556 Adams Street LLC doing business as Novara subject to the conditions discussed at this meeting. And I'll second that. Okay, motion made and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Congratulations. And good luck. Thank you. Just procedurally, we Mary, you have the latest draft. Will you send that to Emily? Because we'll need, well, we have three days now to get this into the ABCC. So we need the final version of all these conditions that we've just talked about. Maybe we should I'll review circulate what, that tomorrow. Yes. I will re review what I drafted for the meeting to make sure that it's exactly what you just voted. And I will send that for you to review and see whether it's accurate. You have three days to sort it out and figure out that you've got the right conditions. Those are business days? Three business days, so um, Monday, the Thursday. completed application has to go into ABCC within three business days. The rest of the application's ready. I've reviewed it really carefully with Barbara. Um, but these conditions and your own decision, want you want that to go with it. So. And you have to have a record of the vote, which is one of the documents. Okay. I'll do that t tomorrow morning. And speaking of Barbara, she this is her first time through one of these liquor license applications. My first time through one of them. And David, I'm sure yours probably too. Yeah, so, so, um, this was a, a learning experience, but I, I, Barbara did a lot of hard work on this. And I want to thank her she for did. all her efforts yeah. and, uh, and Mary for all of Excellent her assistance job. and help. Thank you. I want to thank Barbara as well because she was really helpful to me because it's my first time going through this on this <laughs> On the other side on of the table. table. Yes. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you. Okay. And motion to, uh, to recess, recess uh, to attend the 25%. Um, uh, I'll second that. Uh, motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. We're recessed.